Welcome traders, I am Adam Harris, Chief Market Analyst, and I'm gonna take you through what I'm looking for this week in terms of the economic calendar. I am interested on Monday, although I have said in, re in uh, last week's analysis that I'm not too concerned about the US economy, I'm not, it's doing really well. I am curious to know about the new home sales. So one of the things that's become apparent is that inflation, any inflation that's kind of hanging around at the moment is really due to corporate price gouging. So really just simply corporate greed. Um, and so that's something that will eventually burst because people are starting to choose cheaper brands. They are starting to do that. So something I expect over this year to become apparent is certain corporations will start to going to cut back prices. We're going to start to get some complaints apparently about inflation still hanging around um, and certain companies performances are going to drop a bit. But that's actually something to be expected when you get a bit of a bubble in a particular area. And definitely we have price gouging happening globally as well. Um, we have also what we call in the UK shrinkflation. I think it's in other areas of the world as well, where for example, you open a packet of Pringles and they're definitely smaller than they were a year ago. So we get that kind of thing where the, the weight changes and the size changes within the packaging and it's sold at an even higher price. So the price isn't even necessarily dropped. Um, and so that's definitely a pattern that's occurred since uh, COVID. Um, and that's definitely something that has to change. We cannot stay in those types of um, that just that type of uh, that type of overpricing. So the next thing that I'm going to pay attention to will be the Royal Bank of New Zealand's interest rate decision. Usually that adds some sort of volatility, but I'm curious to see if they're going to be holding rates. Um, and usually they're relatively sensible. So my expectation for now is exactly that, that they will be holding those rates. And then we'll see what happens uh, after that. That often creates some kind of volatility. So pound Kiwi currency traders often will see quite a bit of swinging in both directions. It's not really tradable, um, especially because of the time at which it occurs. Now, finally, we're, at the, we're in the last stretch, the home stretch of February 2024, um, and uh, Friday, we will not be having non-farm payroll. So we're not going to be having non-farm payroll this Friday. The reason for that is it's just that Friday happens to be the first kind of Friday of the month, um, but usually because the Thursday, the prior Thursday would also include um, certain figures as well related to non-farm payroll. We're not getting that this time, so it'll have to be the following week. But I would also pay attention in the morning to PMI data coming out of the UK, as well as CPI data coming out of Europe. Those are the things I want to watch. I want to see how the UK and Europe, excuse me, are now starting to perform in terms of growth um, and what's happening with regards to inflation on this side of uh, the US um, or at least the side of the Atlantic. So that being said, let's go to the charts and have a look and uh, see what else is going on. Starting off with the volatility index, the VIX, one of the things I want to highlight here again, as you can see in the weekly, is really the best the best one to get a sense of that. You can see it's continually staying below that 50 period moving average. It's staying at lower figures historically right near the lows. So the market, again, the market right now is relatively calm. So that's a good sign. Let's have a look at the dollar index. So the dollar index, what's notable about it is that it's the first kind of down week that we've had for a series of weeks. Um, and it often, in this case, would hint at the beginning of a weekly retracement. So my expectation normally would be that we would see price drop a little bit low. And you can see actually there's a lot of buyers below here above that 103 level. It's very reluctant to commit to that. But what has happened, we have breached the previous low. So we have started to shift into a more bearish momentum. Again, I just kind of want to get rid of these. We don't need those anymore. Um, and we... Uh, and so this is something I'm going to want to watch this week to see if we continue to do that or if we actually do manage to push back up um, from that side. But there's definitely some strong resistance around the 104.25 area. Again, I still think from that base of that monthly, we still have that potential to go up to hit that 105 level properly. And so that is possibly there, but we'll see. We've, we've kind of reached the top of the range. We're close. We haven't quite touched the other side. So we could turn around here. Usually I would expect that we go higher. So possibly what could happen is we could find ourselves um, pushing up a little bit higher and then reversing. So let's see how that goes. Again, just you've got to be cautious in these areas. And it has been a funny couple of weeks. Looking at euro dollar, again, we've started that swing low. It's very simple uh, in terms of it's just its shape. We've got some bullishness below here again. Um, and the thing is, is that we still haven't managed to really close above that 108.25 level. We've tried and failed. We're in the middle of the range. We started to break down a little bit here. It's an indecision candle. So the levels to watch then, I beg your pardon, in terms of the monthly, we've got an indecision candle at this time. Definitely the levels to watch would be the highs and lows of last of this last week's candle to see what happens if we look at sterling. Sterling has managed to push up a little bit higher. It's still closed below the 12670 level. So it has still closed at that level and it's still an indecision candle on the monthly. So very similar behavior back within that range. It's actually been kind of frustrating. My uh, returns are in January were one of the best I've had 
in a couple of years. And then February has been kind of uh, just sort of milk toast, not great. Okay, uh, Aussie dollar, US dollar. So just look at this exhaustion coming in here as well. This is usually preemptive of a bit of a correction to the downside. So that could potentially be hinting at dollar strength kicking in. Uh, from the underside here, look at it, how all the moving averages, the 50, the 20, and the 10, have all arrived here to provide some solid resistance. Um, and so at a, at a solid, at a round number as well, 0.65. So this is going to add to provide some strong resistance there. We've got the bottom here looking a little bit more bullish, but this is a strong rejection here. So I'm curious this week to see whether we'll see a continuation to the downside. It is hinting at that. And certainly, I think, again, watching the high and low of this weekly candle, if we break the low first, we're probably then going to see it continue to fold to the downside. Kiwi dollar was looking particularly strong uh, last week and uh, has pushed and closed much higher. So this is really good. I like this. Um, it's a little potentially a little bit overextended. Some wicks arriving in on the daily here. And again, this shows that there's the potential here for a retracement. However, I do think that Kiwi dollar is more likely to continue up over the coming week or two. Um, even if there's a retracement, I'm still bullish on it. It looks as though it's now trying to form a trend to the upside. Um, so this week I'll be looking for continuations to the upside. Then dollar yen still hovering around that 150 level hasn't really done much. If you look at it from a weekly perspective, just that candle there sitting with wicks above and below. And again, this could turn out to be um, a break either way. Again, we still got that bullishness hinting at dollar strength. So the, a lot of the conditions that I spoke about last week are still here this week, which makes it just as tricky for day traders as well. You're going to have to play it as it lies. Looking here, for example, dollar Swissy did move into a bit of a downtrend, then found some support. And again, you've got another indecision candle that just supports the general indecision in the markets. And dollar CAD is just ridiculous. Again, we're just right in amongst the moving averages. We've got wicks on top, wicks below, just cruising along, just general indecision and stuck within this range of rule. So very similar to last week in, <clears throat> in the sense that um, there's just sort of mixed sentiment, which is the result of indecision. Okay, at some point we will get a solid breakout. And the question is, will it be kind of dollar strength or dollar weakness? Uh, we'll just have to have a look. I think that we're potentially due for a, a dollar strength burst, but then potentially a reversal after that. So dollar CAD, I mean gold, I beg your pardon. So gold broke out beautifully. We spoke about this last week. Looking nice. I love this. This is a good continuation candle. It's a bullish engulfing candle. Also closing above the indecision candle the, or the wick exhaustion over here, implying usually that it's going to continue up. So this week for me, I'll be looking for gold to continue up to 2050, um, potentially just to these old highs here, 2058. <clears throat> Again, unless we get a surprise dollar strength. So right now, the only thing that could really mess with stuff is dollar strength if it comes out of nowhere. But gold is looking good. Silver. Uh, so silver, I was on bullish on last week and actually gold took off and not silver. Um, I'm still bullish on it. We've got a nice little bullish candle here. I'm still expecting this to break a little bit higher. So uh, expecting that to continue up. Let's just have a quick look through some of the other commodities. Copper looking good, just hovering near these highs, generally indecisive, but battling with resistance, but still more bullish than bearish. Coffee, excuse me, dropping to the downside there, starting to break through support. That now looks bearish. I'd expect coffee shorter term to head lower, natural gas, trying desperately to turn around, not really having too much success yet. I'm going to mark this level because this could ultimately turn out to be a little bit of support. We'll see how that goes. No real change there on natural gas. Let's move on to crude oils. <clears throat> so crude oils did move higher this week and then knocked back off resistance. And I think I spoke about this as well as that's not really free and clear until it gets past that resistance level. Um, overall, we could see it take another run at that over the coming weeks, but that's quite a big knock. Um, so at least initially, I'm looking to see this head a little bit lower. We'll see if it can find some support around the $76 level and take another run at that. If if we do start to take another run at that, the MACD looks nice and bullish at this time. So we should ultimately be looking, heading towards a breakout to the upside. Again here, look at this up and down, up and down. So actually when you look at it from a weekly perspective, we had a bullish week the previous week. Last week we closed lower. So that's quite a bit of a rejection. Usually in situations such as this, we would see price head lower first before it heads back up. Um, but as I said, the MACD looks nice and bullish. So the momentum, underlying momentum price is still closing higher. Um, and so there is still some bullish momentum there. Then we have a look at wheat. Just wheat just continuing to head lower and lower and lower. This is These are historic lows. Um, so that's quite interesting. Sugar um, also looks potentially as, as though that's going to continue to head a little bit lower. This was a nice solid rejection. And then it's immediately hit um, a level here. So just look at the general behavior here. It's very, there's no clear trend. There's no trend at this time. It's ping-ponging around. So best to just kind of wait on the sidelines for it to produce some clarity. 
cotton now breaking solidly out of this range should continue to move to the upside. So this week, I'm curious to see if it will continue up. It's got a little bit of resistance there, but it still looks more bullish and bearish and therefore um, potential there for cotton to move a little bit higher. Now, right on to the MVPs. Okay, so looking at the Dow, so I am at some point obviously expecting a bit of a deeper correction, certainly from the weekly. And, uh, you know, just like being a broken clock that can be right twice a day at some point, obviously we will get a correction. We are in a bull market. So for me, corrections are buying opportunities and I see them as short term and medium term only, not as longer term changes in sentiment. Um, but in this particular case, what happened last week was we did have FMC. Uh, we also had a couple of good uh, we also had a couple of good quarterly results from a few companies as well, which performed well. And price actually consolidated at this level and then managed to break through and continue up. And so far, it really looks quite decent on the weekly. Just want to point this out, consolidated and broke high. Consolidation and a break high, consolidation and break high is perfectly acceptable because my concern is that the market runs and runs and runs without taking a breather. And when it consolidates, it is taking a breather. So you can either get a correction or you can get a consolidation. And so far, it still looks nice and good. So last week where I was concerned about that, now it's looking relatively good. If we find the price this week immediately comes back in and closes lower, then we're still not free and clear of that, of that, uh, of the market taking a bit of a break. Okay, so S&P as well, continue to close high. One thing I do want to point out here, I'm very interested to see how quickly we are going to hit 40,000, folks. This is obviously very significant. I want to mention this. So for me, 40,000 is going to be something that is definitely worth keeping an eye out and celebrating when we get there. So just keeping in mind how far this has traveled um, from 30,000 to 40,000 or close to 40,000 just since October. That's incredible, right? I mean, think about that. That's that is just such a gargantuan percentage of the historical performance of it just within six months. It's really, really cool. Um, and you know, another thing to be thinking about this as well, if you're if you're a if you're a if you're a bear in this kind of market, because we are in a bull market, if you're a bear in this market and you're not taking uh, a piece of it, then you know you need to keep in mind that the, ultimately that is kind of going to be on you. We will have our bear markets. We've had our bear markets recently. We're now in a bull market, so the bears need to get kind of get on board or get out the way. Um, we are going to have our corrections, but this bull market could potentially run for three, five, seven, ten years. We could have this for quite a while. Um, okay, so just just keep that in mind. There are going to be weekly corrections, uh, and if we do see some signs, if we do start to see something potentially crumble, uh, for example, <clears throat> we start to see price. Uh, get back below this 50 period moving average, which would be the very first thing I would expect to see. And we are very, very far away from that. Okay, we're very far away from the 50 period moving average. So we are nowhere near a bear market at this time. Uh, and even if I go back and historically look at crashes and sudden crashes, uh, they haven't changed the bull markets. They've just been a correction in the markets recovered. And any big market Bear markets we've had, such as the 2007-2009 global financial crisis, didn't happen overnight. They took 18 months to fall. So either way, whichever way you look at it, we're still in a bull market. So get on board and get a slice of the market. S&P 500 as well, looking particularly nice and healthy. Really nice bit of a double bottom and a bit of a range breakout continuation. Continuation there, nice continuation candle. Again, I would love for it to connect to the moving averages, but overall, it looks really, really good. So at this time, if we do get a correction this week or another pullback, I'll see that more as a consolidation. But to me, it actually appears as though we've had a consolidation this week and we're continuing on now. NASDAQ, beautiful. Look at this. Price is connected with a 10 period moving average. It, uh, we had a, a break and a retest of uh, resistance testing support. We've come back and tested the moving average. That is a requirement for a, for, a ret for a retracement. I don't know why I'm stumbling so much today. That is one of the requirements for a retracement, which means we've now hit a minimum requirement for a retracement, which we're now good to go. So this week, what would be of interest is to see if we break the highs. One of the other things I want to just remind you of in case this, this is the first one you're seeing is that we have been in a bull market, okay, since the beginning of 2023. <clears throat> Let me just go back and have a look at that. Since the beginning of 2023, it didn't look like it. You can only look back now and go, okay, that's where we, that was where we technically became a bull market. But I'm trying to remind you, we've been in it for over a year or oh, yeah, just over a year, which is pretty cool. Um, and so just to kind of draw your attention to that. Russell 2000, also for me looking good, 
Last week, I spoke about how a lot of the markets were sitting near the top of a range and I was expecting them to either break out or get knocked back in and actually nothing happened. So that's on me. I do sometimes forget that sometimes things take a bit longer to happen um, and I expect them to happen this week and actually it happens next week. And an another example where I do that is I'll expect a stock to move up a certain number of points and actually it takes two, three days or maybe even two weeks to do that. And I kind of overestimate. And that's often because currencies can move larger numbers in a, in a week. And so I, I do sometimes occasionally do that. So in this case, I stand by that assessment. I still think we're sitting at these carriers. We're either going to get knocked back or we're going to get, or we're going to get a breakout. It didn't happen last week. And because of that, I'm reminded it might not happen this week, but I do expect it to happen. Okay, so when it happens, it'll, you know, if it happens this week, it happens this week. If it happens two weeks from now, it happens it. It is in the near future. Uh, FTSE 100 also, again, still stays where, where it is. It's still at the top, near the top of the range, looking bullish. The daily even had a beautiful retracement. You've almost got your 50, 20, and 10 in a bullish formation. You've got a bullish inside candle. We broke the high. So in other words, we're here. It looks as though this week it wants to keep going past 7,700 and on to 7,750. So again, that is still intact, that concept of a breaking out. And wow, the DAX, just an absolute performer, just beautiful. So any pullbacks here for me are buying opportunities, 17,500 right on the horizon there. Uh, it's not going to take long. We'll be hitting, we're going to be hitting really... The thing about the corrections that we'll get this year is that, you know, we are going to be hitting new highs and at some point we'll have nice corrections and those corrections will take a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months and then we'll resume the uptrend. So it isn't just a straight line and the markets do not move in a straight line. Okay, they don't do that. So just kind of just reminding you of that. Looks good. We've got the ASX also looking very nice here. Kind of did a nice move higher, pulled down and a nice little inside bullish candle, which is actually a double bottom. So these are nice little tweezers, very powerful type of setup and it's attempting to continue. It's going to encounter a little bit of resistance here at that 76.65 level, but I expect it to also try to push on to 7,700. Nikkei, beautiful. I've marked 40,000 here already. It's looking incredible. Okay, so just keep in mind as well here, this has been consolidating for a very long time before it managed to break out. So all of this big move here is as a result of it not having really done anything for whew, more than two years. So more than two years, so it's enjoying itself. It's got some nice moves. Potentially 40,000 will be the one where it takes a bit of a breather. We'll see how that goes. Now, moving on to the uh, equities of interest. Apple is still looking weak. I still think there's a very strong possibility here. We could see Apple break lower. So this week didn't really resolve anything. We've got, I'm going to mark it here. I should have I'll just get rid of this and then I'll put another level in here and we can kind of take it from there. Um, so that is a potential indecision candle. We could break the high, but this is not looking very, very strong. At least on a daily, it looks as though it's trying to form a bit of a head and shoulders. Um, and we'll see it and keep an eye on it. Overall, the MACD is bearish, which means, again, it's more bearish than bullish. We'll have to see how that goes. Uh, it's still bullish on the weekly and certainly still bullish on the monthly. So we're getting some very mixed results there. But yeah, this level might be tested again. <clears throat> on the other hand, should we break above 190, then we'll be fine. We'll, it'll break out of that pattern because... About 17% of those patterns fail. Uh, then we have got Amazon testing those highs. Look at that. And it's a bit of a megaphone pattern. So it just continues to try to break through that. It's a solid monthly candle here. I really want to see what happens here. Uh, we could fail, come back down. So we could fail, come back down, close the gap, and then go back up. And that would be throughout March because we're going to be in March soon. We'll see if that's the case. But wouldn't it be cool to see if it broke higher by the end of the week? at t again, trying to hold at this level. Looks fine, nothing super great here. We do have the 50, 20, and 10 in a bullish formation, which means, which implies that we should see it recover and go higher. But that 50 period on the monthly is also a real problem for it, a strong resistance. So let's have a look and see if that weekly wins out uh, over the next, over the coming week. Arc. Fine, Arc is one of the ones that I was, ex I'm looking to see it break out of this range. As long as Kathy just leaves it alone, it's got a good chance of getting out. So if she sells some really good stuff or buys something really bad, I can't predict how that's going to behave there. We'll see how that goes. ASML continues to do fine. It's a nice little consolidation period here. So we've spoken about consolidations. You've got a beautiful little uh, level support here around that 900 level. And this is a bit of a consolidation. So what does that mean? It means, again, if we get a similar behavior, we get a bit of a consolidation and a connection with the moving average, we could see a breakout to the upside. And if that is the case, if it follows that behavior, then we would get another consolidation this week. So maybe this week is going to be another, like, what's going on? 
Um, all right, now what was significant was Glencore breaking out to the downside. Here it tried, uh, it just tried to stall it and continue down. Here's a break and a close below. So the momentum is now definitely bullish and we have a confirmed downtrend on the monthly. Okay, so for now, my expectation is certainly more bearish than bullish. Let's see how far down it goes. I've marked these levels, but it's most likely going to find a bit of support, at, if only temporary, on that 50 period moving average. Tesco. It's in the right spot to turn around. It tried to do it. It's produced a swing low, but it hasn't really closed strongly enough, in my opinion. So let's keep an eye on it this week. <clears throat> Actually, nice little close on Friday. Let's see if it can turn things around, and it's just a nice weekly correction. Then we have Amex. So Amex is doing a bit of a consolidation. Look at the change of angle of momentum here. It's just really getting ready to do a bit of a stall. Maybe it'll do a bit of a consolidation and then a continuation. It's battling a little bit over here. So uh, we'll need to see. This one is kind of implying that it's slowing down. Berkshire Hathaway still looks looks so good. Um, looks really good here on the monthly. Looks now it's starting absolutely to enter overextended on that weekly. This is a ridiculous type of thing. If we take a get a sense of its, uh, you know, over history, look how far away it is from the moving averages here compared to even, you know, really good periods during 2023. <clears throat> Similar behavior here in 2022. So look at that kind of a distance. Let's compare it. It's actually had a better run right now. Okay, it's had a better run right now and so we'll be looking to see it. So if you find yourself getting scared while the market's this bullish and going, this is impossible, the market's gonna crash, the sky's gonna fall, that's not necessarily gonna be the case. There are so many more positive indicators throughout most of the global economies. We've just come out of massive bear markets over the, after COVID and post-inflation and all kinds of things. So maybe it feels a little bit too good to be true. That's absolutely, if you feel that way, I can understand that, but the markets are incredibly bullish. Just they really, really are. And we can find out why later, but just realize they are. And the opportunities are there now. The only thing that's frustrating for me as well is that, thankfully, I got in on a lot of positions when they come back. Getting in when the market is near the moving averages is a better idea in terms of, obviously, in terms of finding positions, getting in the worst time to do it, um, which is what untrained, sort of untrained and impulsive emotional buying tends to do, is to chase the market when it's at periods like this, when it's very far away from the moving averages, when we have to wait for it to have a correction. And I'm going to mark this as being in a little bit of a danger zone. Okay, not really sure where it's going to turn around, but it is certainly in a bit of a danger zone now. It does need to have a bit of a correction. So there's always that expression about go away in May or sell, you know, go, what's it? <laughs> what was it? Sell in May and go away. So that could be something that's going to happen. We could maybe be pushing through, have an insane move through till April and then have a massive correction until September or something. That could be another way in which this could potentially unfold. Coca-Cola looking really good, guys. This is a consolidation breakout. It's a nice move. So for now, I expect Coca-Cola to keep trying to move higher. It could be working its way out to the top of the range. Looks good. BP. So crude oils, what did we see? There wasn't much of a clue going on there, mostly on that monthly going sideways. Still slightly more bullish than bearish, and therefore we can see that reflected in Exxon. It's amazing to see the correlation. I don't know. I can get a correlation. Uh, I can get that coefficient, but I'm going to say here it's, it's about a 70 to 85% correlation between crude oil prices. Um, and that. And then we look at General Motors. Nice little consolidation and it is trying to continue. It's at the bottom of the range. It's really trying to break out. So let's see if fingers crossed this week General Motors breaks out of that range. JP Morgan Chase, very healthy guys. Let me tell you what's amazing about this. It's the angle of momentum looks really good. It's had a retracement, which was also a retest of resistance. Um, and it's continued up and the angle of momentum is roughly the same. In other words, it's not going parabolic. Um, it looks good. Any kind of pullbacks here would be uh, buying opportunities for me, and it's definitely got its eye on 200. So let's just put that in, mark that out. That's going to be very interesting to see. We're not that far away from it. Very cool. Adidas. All right, so Adidas. Okay, so I've spoken a lot about the angular momentum here. It was nice and bullish, then it was less bullish, and it's range bound now. So I'm going to get rid of these. Um, get rid of these arrows. We don't need them right now. And I want to shift it more, <coughs> excuse me, into more of a range bound, rangy type of behavior. I'm just going to do this, but we're looking good. We're looking very much as though we might break out of that uh, in the kind of in the near future as well. So that looks cool. Meta. Okay. Meta's consolidation, trying to break high, very similar to what we saw. It really would benefit, trust me, that it would benefit from a retracement back down to 400 if it could. 
Not sure we're going to get that right now. It does appear as though it's going to keep trying to go a little bit higher. One of the ones that did that was NVIDIA, which we'll get to in a moment. So Morgan Stanley, consolidation. This to me still looks more likely to break out to the upside. I'm still more inclined to think that we will get a move to the upside here than to the downside. So let's see if we do get that this coming week as well. And it'll probably just shoot right up and go straight to that level of resistance. So NVIDIA, what I was expecting, so this is one of the things I mapped out, was we had actually started the weekly candle at the time, just before earnings came out, was a nice red candle. It had actually started a beautiful retracement. And this was a few hours before the, the, the uh, results came out. And therefore, I was looking for a beautiful correction and a continuation. Instead, it really did very well. Um, it's not that I don't expect the overall trend to change. I was just thinking it would take a bit of a breather. Um, and so uh, it actually just performed really well. Straight up, tapped 800, which is where we are now. And uh, we, I'm still looking for it to have that correction. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll get rid of these for now. I'm still looking for it to do that. But yeah, overall looking really good. That's a bullish engulfing candle. I want to see where it closes. And we get a sense of it from the monthly. This has gone parabolic. So if you're wanting to see an example of a stock that has gone parabolic, this is it. What does that mean? It just means that when it does have its correction, it's going to be a relatively hefty correction. And if you think that that's not possible, let me introduce you to Bitcoin. Let me introduce you to Tesla. Let me introduce you to so many others. Okay, so you can go parabolic as we did here and you can ultimately have a correction. This is Tesla. You can ultimately have that correction. Um, we can have that happen. We can have it happen with gold. It's even happened here where gold has gone parabolic historically and then had a big correction. We can have it happen. Doesn't mean the correction is going to be terrible. Just means it's going to have a, a, it's going to have a proportionate co correction in terms of how enthusiastic the buying was. So sorry, let me go back to that. Let me pick that up. Where would I expect it ultimately to have a correction to? Well, at this time, I think we've had this consolidation and a continuation. So potentially not actually back down to the 400 level, be back down to potentially to that sort of 600 level. So we're going to see if that's going to be the case. But right now, I'm not showing enough signs of that <clears throat> just yet. Netflix looking good. Consolidation, a retest of this and still going sideways a bit. It's still kind of just trying to stay above these levels and it's doing really, really well. So for now, I'm still bullish on this. Uh, not too worried about it just yet. PayPal. PayPal, another just nothing weak. Okay, looking at it from a monthly perspective, it's actually considering hitting lower here. It's still kind of because it's pulled back. It's considering it, but there's definite bullish divergence. So I think we're more likely to see PayPal go up now than down. Spotify, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Really nice, really nice. What I call a pause and go. So a big move and then a pause and a go. So it looks really nice. This has got lots of room to go up to the uh, these highs up here. So let me just copy that, move that up to about here. Um, and so there's some nice room. That's a nice 300, nice round number. Let's see if it makes it. Could potentially just continue going. I'd love, again, this is very similar to some of the others where we're seeing a lot of bullishness now, just extreme bullishness. And therefore, what we could see is possibly just a really big bull run for a month or two and then have a much bigger correction uh, middle of the year. And what could be amazing about it is don't forget we're running into we've, we've got massive uh, sort of autocracy versus democracy elections around the world. If like me, you're a fan of democracy and you're a fan of sort of truth, uh, then you're going to be obviously watching to see how all of those play out around the world. There's definitely where the closest we've been since World War II to uh, clashes, global clashes. And that's predominantly because of that autocracy versus democracy. Um, and as we head towards November, which is the big one, that's the big kahuna. That's going to be the non-farm peril of elections as we go, I suppose. No, something much bigger than that. It's the most important one of, of in our lifetimes. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. We're really wanting to see how it goes. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Democracy is going to survive. It's going to be good, but it's still under attack. What I mean is it's going to survive the election. Um, there's going to be a lot of interesting things that are going to happen. There's going to be some states that are going to refuse to accept the election results and there's going to be a whole lot of drama but it's going to be i believe less dramatic um overall than 2020 but there's going to be a couple of high degree incidents like some really crazy stuff that's going to go on but uh at this at this time all the data points to being a smash out win for democracy okay it's gonna be a knockout win so for those of you who are stressing about it right now the data points to that if that changes i will let you know Okay, so uh, this looks really good. And this could be why we're going to see a lot of that market bullishness just keep going because that sentiment is very optimistic. It's funny, we've been so pessimistic for so long, we might not appreciate that actually maybe life is getting slightly better. And so uh, we'll see. Okay. Um, now, this, you know, I do, you know, you might have the opinion 
that, and I've had it in the past, that there's a disconnect between the stock market and the, you know, the real world. Um, and actually, the thing is that sometimes the sentiment follows the market, not the other way around, meaning that the market gets bullish and the sentiment is very pessimistic and that eventually the sentiment relents and goes, okay, well, maybe life's not so bad. So that can actually be something that happens here. Um, if you're all doom and gloom, potentially just take a break, have a look at how many things are actually better than they were 10 years ago, for example. Um, but right now, things are not looking worse. They're actually looking better. We've just got to get some of that corporate greed under control. If you guys have heard about Reddit, you know, giving a massive bonus to the CEO, which seems absolutely disproportionate. And then you're hearing about companies cutting back, but then giving payout bonuses to upper management. That's the kind of stuff that has to kind of calm down and get a bit under control because that's the stuff that's been absolutely crazy since the early 2000s. And it's part of where a lot of that dissatisfaction comes from is that it seems like some people are being paid disproportionately large sums of money while getting rid of other people and other people losing jobs. So that's where a lot of that stuff is coming from. But it is getting better. That I can promise you. It is getting better and it's something we just need to keep working on. Okay, I only mention that because it's part of the economic stuff. It comes into this. It's part of the sentiments. It's part of PMI. It's part of all these different things that happen. Okay, so this looks good. Look at that. We're starting to break out there. Look, this is, as I have said many times before, looking at Spider. It's a double bottom. It's going to break high. It looks like it's doing it now. That looks really good. FedEx is managing to recover a little bit here. That looks a little bit better than it has. Let's have a look at Tesla. Um, Tesla is not did not have a great week. So again, just something to comment on. All the markets are just banging and creating new highs, record highs, um, historical highs, and Tesla's not partaking in that. Um, and that's just interesting. Why? We'll find out. We'll find out later. Um, it could be something as simple as, you know, people are not buying as many EV cars for now, or there's maybe a bit of a hesitation about electric cars. Maybe hybrids have become more. There could be something that would make more sense about it. Um, it could be applicable to lots of different companies. Um, but we will eventually know. There'll be a time, you know, a year from now, <clears throat> we'll see what's happened. We'll be able to determine. So I'm, I'm just curious for now. Let's see what happens with this. Where it becomes a red flag to me is if this starts tanking while everything else continues to climb. Okay, if it's kind of not going anywhere, it could just be lagging. Vanguard. Vanguard looks good. Look at this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, again, performing well. QQQ as well. I need to go. I'm going to actually add QQQ to this. We need to, we need to uh, add this and include it. So I've added in QQQ, which is an ETF, <clears throat> and it's also known as growth stocks. Very, very good. It's also performing really well. So these are, you know, either ETFs or, indis or indices or indexes that you, can, um, that you can partake in. If you don't know what else to do, if you don't know what else to do, do this, okay? Because they're relatively safe and steady, like the S&P 500, okay? Uh, now, so that looks fine. That was the Vanguard one, which I was showing you. Let's have a look at Walt Disney. Walt Disney, I want to see it get back up above this, but that's okay because it's you can now argue it's stuck within this range. So it had a little bit of a false breakout at the bottom. It's now back up to the top of the range, and we'll see how it's going to do. It's had a nice boost. Any kind of a pullback, let's see if we can break out to this. But what I would say is this. When we break out here, we're going to see it start to move. So again, that's good news for me. That then becomes another buying opportunity when we break out of that range because that's a good sign. All right, let's have a quick look at bonds. Bonds are still stalling in this area. They did break lower. They haven't gone much lower this week. Okay, they're just pretty much in the same place. Eurobunt as well, trying to stay. This is interesting to me. That area there was potential support, potential resistance, might find itself as potential support. So I want to see this week, does it go up? And most importantly, and this will be, I think, a very significant uh, behavior or, ch or change of behavior would be to see it break through that. Once it starts to break through that, we're likely to see a bit more of a significant shift, certainly on the weekly. So if it breaks through this on the daily, then that sentiment is shifting on the weekly. It'll be above the moving averages and we'll see it start to move back up to the old highs. So that also looks really good to me. Um, look, just keep in mind that, you know, back in the day, going back 60 years ago, uh, Benjamin Graham, who was uh, initially was Warren Buffett's um, lecturer at Varsity, uh, and then ultimately an investing partner of his, he was just a, one of the founding fathers, I should say one of the grandfathers of great in modern investment theory as well, very much value investing. 
the world was simpler then. They pretty much just kind of had bonds and stocks and you would just shift the weighting in your portfolio depending on whether you were in a bull market or bear market. And so you'd be moving your sentiment from or optimism into private sector, which is companies, which is the stock market, to government, which was if you wanted the backing of the government. So that was kind of how you did it. You also get wartime bonds, you get a few other things in that as well. And so it was kind of simple, whereas today we have derivatives, we have other tools as well. You know, we've got cryptos, we've got such a wide variety of that. And so the thing is that you want to keep in mind is that when people look at bonds now and bonds don't behave the way people expect it to, they then misread or extrapolate the wrong thing from that. And actually, it's really simple right now. Um, if bonds are going down, but stocks are going up, then it just means the appetite for stocks is still there. One of the things you see is that when everybody wants security, they move across to bonds. So if bonds aren't going anywhere, then the market's not really looking for security. It is very much that simple. You can come up with complicated reasons for it, but the fact of the matter is that if the market's looking for security, we'll see bonds climb. It's just unavoidable. And so if bonds aren't climbing, the market's not looking for that. Uh, and so that's why part of the reason that was so interesting was during the recent bear market, we didn't really see bonds move that much. Um, and so that showed you that although we were going through a bear market, the market was still relatively keen to get back to climbing. Okay, wow, it's a long video. I'm so sorry. Let me just wrap this up. Let's move on. So we've got Bitcoin looking good, bursting through. This is probably going to work its way up through to uh, all-time highs. Just working its way this time. I think a big difference this time is it's not just retail money here. It's not just a fad. We've actually got a little bit more institutional money coming into cryptos. It's, a, it's moving a little bit more, kind of the volume and the depth is more there. Uh, Ethereum as well. The beauty of Ethereum is it's got more room to catch up. It's a bit of a lagger. Beautiful pullback here. Beautiful little buy entry opportunity there at a break to the new high. So very nice little, little, little bit of a break and therefore uh, also looking good. We've got Solana. Um, which, oh, I looked at that as a potential buy. It had a deeper pullback. That's fine. Not going anywhere, but I do think it's a lag. And therefore, I think when it does catch up, we will see a break through that. So that'll be fine. Uh, Cardano uh, also there. Interesting to me. Is that a buy over there? And you can see strong resistance up there. So that's really what that's batting with. And then we've got Binance. Just ridiculous. That solid breakout of that range. So there is your momentum candle, which so for now, I would expect this to continue moving higher, but these swings are wild. Um, so for, from, a, from a shorter term trading with stop losses, pff, that looks ridiculous to me, but that looks good. Nice and bullish there. So there we go. I'm so sorry to keep this running over. I never really want them to exceed 30 minutes. We're at 37 minutes, basically. I want to wish you a fantastic week. Uh, let's keep an eye out on the news as well there for shorter term traders, day traders. Um, overall, as I said, market sentiment is nice and bullish. Uh, things are looking up. So with that in mind, there should be plenty of opportunities uh, across most of the other markets as well. I want to see what happens with crude oil and gold this week. All right. Thank you.